Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Jim, for leading the singing. I'm welcome. All right. We're going to do what we always do. We're going to read to you some emails. We get emails from everywhere because people watch us on the Internet 24 hours a day all over the world. We're streaming. And we live stream Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 7 p.m. on Sunday night and Wednesday night Central Standard Time. And uh, these are people that write. Some of them like what I'm saying and some don't. I got uh, from Austin Scott. Good afternoon, Jim. This past weekend I was handed an outline in the store which had your ministry's information on it. The subject, the call, was near the top, if that helps you know what snippet I'm referring to. I have got 30 years of messages on predestination at least once a week. I have no idea what it is. In it, it states, Jesus says the shepherd king died only for his sheep, the church. He did not die for every individual. However, he died for all men. That's right. I assume by the quotation marks around all men, this is intended to refer to something other than the wording would suggest. No, the wording is suggesting correctly. Jesus did not die for everybody. He died for his wife, the church, and gave himself for her there in Ephesians 5.25. He only died for the church. If he died for the man in hell, what's he doing in hell? He didn't die for him. They're vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, vessels of mercy which God has before prepared to glory, and the vessels of mercy are the few that's going to come into the narrow gate. Uh, there seems to be a contradiction here, not dying for every but all. Let me show you very quickly. It doesn't take any amount of time. In the Old Testament, there was a family of God. It started with Adam, goes on down to Noah, and then his son Shem. And this is the promise by the light, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And that's one man, one family. One family. And then... God comes to Jacob, who is, his name is changed to Israel in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. That's who his family is. And then because Israel went after all of these uh, sun and tree goddesses, all the time they were a kingdom from 1 Samuel to 2 Chronicles. And these were the Shemitic people. This was, the son of Noah was Shem, and we named these Semitic people or Semitic people all the way down and through second, first and second Samuel Kings and Chronicles Israel kept going after Baal Grove and all the sun and tree goddesses and God kept telling them if you keep doing that I'm going to bring the sword, the famine, the pestilence and that I will bring the beast Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome Pablum, Persia, Greece, and Rome to carry away to captivity, and they did that for 500 years. And then he says, I'm going to call my people by another name in the book of Isaiah, and that'll be Gentile elect church. And that is the all men, all men as opposed to this one flesh, or it's all flesh, red, yellow, white, black, and brown flesh, and that's the all men. And he said that to Timothy, who was pastoring at Ephesus. Ephesus was a Gentile church. That's the all men. He said God would have all men be saved. In the Old Testament, you could not associate with Gentiles. God would kill the Gentiles in given situations. And then he goes on to say, I was wondering how you could respond to this apparent contradiction. It's not a contradiction. It's exactly what it says. The all men is the all flesh. They were cut off from the truth. In fact, in the Old Testament, these people were in darkness. Darkness that were Gentiles. They are actually the spirits in prison. Prison means the division of day and light, or day and night are light and darkness. They were in darkness, and God sends Paul to the Gentiles 
And Paul says that to King Agrippa. He said, God sent me to call the Gentiles to the light. There in Acts, the 26th chapter. You really don't know all this message. But they're not all going to be saved. Huh? All Gentiles are not going to be saved. All Gentiles are not going to be saved. But a portion of, a portion of something was the whole to the Jew. And they said a part of a, a part would be the whole, and that was a word called synecdoche to the Jew. And then he goes on to say, I was wondering how you respond to this apparent contradiction. I just gave you the lesson on it. It would seem that this would require a different interpretation of the familiar passage of John 3.16. John 3.16 doesn't say God loved everybody in the world. It said God so loved. So is an adverb. It tells how, when, where, and why. And he didn't love everybody. He so loved, or in the same fashion, verse 14 is talking about. I don't have time to go through all that. If you want some things on this, you write me, and I'll give you an explanation on everything. It doesn't say God loved everybody. He didn't love everybody. He loved Jacob and hated Esau before they were born. He hates all workers of iniquity. Where whosoever is encouraged to believe and be saved. Not what it says. doesn't say whosoever believeth in him. It does not say that in the original Greek text. It says that the believing all. Believing is singular. The is singular. All is singular. And the, uh, the one all is the flock, the sheep, the wife, the bride. Austin Scott, no address given. Austin, you really want to know about this. I've covered this in so much detail. There's no getting around it. God doesn't love everybody. He loved his, his, the, the flock. If you really want to know, I'll teach you the whole thing. Roger Gibbons writes from Canada. Good day to all at Grace Ministry. My question is, if God's elect was chosen before the foundation of the world, then why do they need a mediator? <laughs> they were chosen to have a mediator. They were chosen so they could mediate between God and them, but the unbelieving vessel of wrath cannot me have a mediator to justify to God the Father that they are worthy. They're not worthy of everlasting life. Nobody's worthy of that. That's called grace, unmerited favor. That's what grace is. I can't believe these people would write. You haven't heard the whole message. This is from Grant Pasco in Australia. Howdy all. Howdy, Grant. How you doing? This scripture hit me in the head today, and it became even more clear. John three, uh, James 3, 15, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Well, devilish is the word. Demonion means to distribute fortunes. A key scripture that links the word demon with the flesh. That's right. And the senses, it's the sensual man. That word sensual is the word sukikos, the natural, the sensual man. Sensual man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Kind regards, Grant Pasco in Australia. Thank you, Grant. John Aurora from New York. Hey, John, how you doing? Uh, hello, all at Grace and Truth. Hope you continue in the well way. I start, I thank God for everything. We had fellowship Saturday night starting uh study in light it has to be an important topic since it is first recorded since the first recorded words of god to us in genesis 1 3. this is one of those never-ending studies all we can do is look at every verse and word every concept we can get our hands on we we will do our best as long as we remain in the light we will be all right God willing, we will continue in the way. Grace and peace to all of, to you all. God paid John the roar. Thank you, John. We love you. Uh, Lancy D'Souza in India writes to us. Dear Grace and Truth family, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all so much for the three DVDs. May the Lord richly bless you all. Agape Lancy D'Souza and... Uh, got another... Uh, let me see here. Uh, another 
letter from, or another email from David Swallow. He says it's pronounced swallow. It's S-O-I-L-E-A-U, swallow. I have not wrote in a while. David Swallow from Hamlet, North Carolina. Changes at work require more attention than I would like. Thanks again for being steadfast in the truth, although I had several books you had on your list from my small library recently purchased several more. Kittle's 10-volume History of Jewish People in the Times of Jesus Christ by Edersheim, four books set, Interlinear Bible, Poole's Commentary set, a couple of Thomas Watson's paperbacks. He's my favorite writer. As, as told you previously, I attended a Bible college, have a degree, and the diploma is in the bottom of a cardboard box. That's probably about all it's good for. Again, not much was learned there. You don't learn anything in seminaries nowadays. Or as my father used to call them, cemeteries. Can't find the time and day to study like you need to. But that's my goal for the rest of this life, to learn all I can and to stand on the truth. This world don't like it as you know, meaning the religious establishment. Hope to keep Hope to keep helping the ministry. Look forward to each broadcast when able to watch with notebook in hand. One thing to mention, when missing when missing a service, I try to watch it Ustream, but they're not showing the whole service, 3611, 3613. We're only 27 minutes. Were we on 27 minutes over there in North Carolina? Anyway, God, God bless Grace and Truth family. Hope to attend in person someday or talk on the phone sometime. David Swallow, Hamlet, North Carolina. Thank you, David. We appreciate that, brother. Uh, I'm going to comment on something. Uh, if people want to write to me and be contentious, I don't need that. All you have to do is write to me and ask me a question. Don't say, what are you going to do with this? <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Yeah, I do. I usually do. Everything that looks contentious to you doesn't to me because we go into all the original texts and the culture and the customs and idioms. I think that's what makes people angry at me. If you ask the average person on the street, do you believe in communion in a church? They'd say, well, yes. The Bible says Jesus took bread and break it and said, take his, eat, eat, this is my body. We'll turn around and ask them, what's the body of Christ? They'll go, well, it's the body. It's the church. Eat of the church. That's what it's talking about. Ask somebody, what's baptized mean? Well, that means to dip in water or sprinkle water. No, it doesn't. It means to cover with a stain or dye. He's washed us from our sins in his own blood, and there's one baptism. Deal with that. Uh, Michael Nietzsche writes to us. He's in Charlotte. Greetings, Pastor Jim, Mary, and Grace and Truth in our Lord Jesus Christ. Certain or a lot of so-called Christians are saying that Trump or pointing to Isaiah is God's new King Cyrus. I doubt that. <laughs> to make America great again. America has never been great. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin were deists. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Savior. Jer Thomas Jefferson said the book of Revelation was the ravings of a maniac. That's what he said. He didn't believe in the deity of Christ, neither did Ben Franklin. Where did you come up with America's great, great again? They have never been great. How could we have been great? Besides that, do you think Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin and, and uh, the boys, brought? they started America? There were... Puritans that were here long before these guys came along, before they were born. They, they were ruling 
with the Mayflower Compact, and they believed in predestination. Make them arrogant again. Will I do? Well, I do not know about that, <laughs> but I believe that we were temporarily spared from a godless woman. Well, she's no more godless than. Don't side with one of these people above another. They're all godless. He wanted to put most people in Nazi concentration camps. I don't even believe that. Who herself has had people killed for getting in her way. I'm not going to go into this. Michael, you're listening to a lot of talk. You can find, do I believe either one of those people were good for a president? I don't believe in American way of government. I believe in the theocracy. Theocracy means theos, God, kratia, ruling. But that only happens in the heart of the believers, the elect family in the church. You can't change these people out here. Whoever we'll come up with the idea of that. It's like saying, let's change car dealers into a bunch of honest people. We've got a president that's going to really get all car dealers to be honest. Yeah. That's not the reason I'm writing. I realize now that some people at first will reject the truth, but then later on start to believe. I know I sow seed, but it is up to God to water it. That's right. Well, one man will plant, the other will water, and God will give the increase. I gave a tract to a man I knew, and he put it aside and said he would get to it later. This was in a McDonald's. He had an important business deal to meet about, well, I get, I could have guessed that business deal was a flop, but he put mammon before God. I was watching the 700 Club, though I know they are false teachers, but because how through Operation Blessing they're rescuing young girls as low as five years old from sex trafficking, one five-year-old girl, her uncle was going to cut her legs off so he could beg the streets of Pakistan for him to make him money. and But Operation Blessing brought the little girl off him for $20. Can you believe how much wickedness is in the hearts of man? Well, that's not all the wickedness there is in the world. So thumbs up to Operation Blessing. I'm not going to thumbs up to anything that Pat Robertson does because he's doing things. He's leading men off into false doctrine. No, I don't agree with that, Michael. It's like people saying, vote for the least, uh, the lesser of two evils. And they pick out somebody who will put their approval on the Baptist church. I'm not going to put my approval on somebody that approves of the Baptist church who does Christmas and they believe in and accept Christ and sinner's prayer and most of the Baptists are going to hell. They don't believe in the right way of salvation. Watch out how you compromise. I don't compliment. They brought out two 15-foot diamondback rattlesnakes and said, vote for one of them. What? Well, listen over here. We took some of its poison out. It'll bite you and it won't kill you as fast, but you will die. What do you mean? The lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils is the one that all of the so-called Christians in America will vote for. They'll vote for the one that you took half the sack of venom out. And he'll still kill you, but he'll just kill you slower. Uh, Sharon Mar Marshall wrote to us, Greetings, Grace and Truth Ministries, and Pastor Jim and Mary Brown, Agape, uh, to you all. Hope all of, of you are continuing to walk in the way of death to self. I continue to share truth on the job because there is so much false doctrine in these last days. I knew by the DVD I watched of you saying Donald Trump would would win the presidency and he is a wicked man. You can't make a billion dollars and not be evil. This is God's will and judgment in America. Keep up the work, Jim, of teaching true doctrine. Agape to you all. I know that you have been united with me in dying to self and knowing God's will each day. Your sister in Christ, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. We, we love you. She's in 
Grand Prairie, Texas. Thank you. You know what's wrong with America? Compromise. Compromise joins hands with everything that can slightly look like it's what you're saying, but it's not. That's what was wrong with Jehoshaphat. He compromised with Ahab, didn't he? Don't compromise with people. Say, well, you won't vote for this guy. No, you won't vote for that guy. Or one of them talking about daily cross and death to self. Well, no, then I'm not voting for him. Then I got a, a little letter here from uh, Sandra Dean. I talked to her today, and she's in Memphis. Dear Brother Jim, thank you for the tapes. Enclosed is a gift for the ministry. Want your thoughts on Christ's soul going to hell. He didn't. I explained to her that. Uh, he did not go to hell. Uh, but we'll communicate with you later. No, Jesus did not. That will not leave my soul in hell. That word Hades is the same word as grave. You won't leave me in the grave. I will resurrect is what he's talking about. And I can't go back to all through all that. The Jews said there was a good Hades and a bad Hades. The word Hades comes from the word Ido and the Alpha Privative. Ido means to see. Ah, Ido or Hades means the place of the unseen. And they call they call the grave the place of the unseen, and they call the hot place the place of the unseen. And they said the believer was in a place of the unseen in his tomb, so that would be Hades. And then the believer was in the heaven with the Lord, which was also Hades, the place of the unseen. But people don't know that, and preachers don't know how to explain it. And, and the word, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The word grave there in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians is the word Hades. I've heard... I've heard my father and other independent Baptist preachers say, are you trying to soften this? It's not Hades, it's hell, H-E-L-L, -L, hell. I'm, that's an old, that's, they got that from uh, the preacher in the early 20th century, uh, Billy Sunday. He used to, he was a showman. He'd get up on the platform, it's H-E-L-L, -L, hell. Billy Sunday was real famous. He was the most famous preacher in America before Billy Graham. He was at the end of the 19th to the beginning of the 20th century and held these big meetings in New York and shouting and, and those kind of things he'd say. Just ignorant as the day is long. And my father tried to be Billy Sunday. That's what he was doing, putting on those shows. Uh, picking up a chair like... Billy Sunday would pick up a chair and, and preach with that chair like that. My father, I saw him do that. Uh, people say, you got everything you say from your father. No, I didn't get nothing from my father. He was a pistol telling you something else. All right, we got to get on with this, don't we? Yes. All right, let me give you our announcements real quick. Uh, we're on TV Monday through Sunday or Sunday through Monday, uh, every night on Comcast Nashville um, at 8.30 p.m. every night. We're also on Friday and Saturday morning, same channel, 49 Comcast, Friday and Saturday morning at 9 a.m., and we're on Channel 3 Tuesday evening at 5 and Thursday night at 7 on Comcast, and uh, be watching us. Uh, we help our needy people. We've got a lot of needy. We do not oppress the needy like these charismatics say. You need to give us your money so God will bless you. We don't believe in that. If you oppress the widow and the orphan, God says, and I hear their cry, I'll kill you. And then your wife will be a widow and your kids will be orphans. Uh, if you want to send to the needy, we've got a lot of needy. We give... About $1,500 a month away, maybe 1800 a month every month to the needy and the poor. Make your check out to Grace and Truth Ministries and put needy on the bottom of it. We also give to our missionaries down in uh, Ecuador. 
They're going to be coming up here to continue their Spanish ministry, Spanish-speaking ministry. They're going to work from here. Things are getting pretty uneasy down there with the government. Their kids are not getting educated. And uh, so uh, if you want to give to Scott and Delilah, just send your mission offering, make it to Grace and Truth, and put uh, mission on the check. You can also send uh, gift cards to our needy people. We've got a picnic. We're announcing our picnic already for next year. That'll be uh, a picnic will be June the 14th. Yes, June, June 17th. 17th. June 17th. Yes. At June 17th this next year, right here in Hendersonville, right down here at the... Rock and Recreation Center, and we also have on October the 14th next year. If you're pr going to prepare your vacation for either one of these, it's good to start preparing now. October 14th will be our chili cookout, and people come from around the country. All right. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Rusty, you want to pray for us? <laughs> 